Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. In this video we will be continuing with the novel Children of Women by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This is his second novel of his Children of Time series and this is part 7. There will be a link to a playlist containing the first six parts of this novel and the first novel at the end of the video. Before we begin, do me a favor and subscribe if you haven't. Give us a like, drop us a comment and now let's continue. Helena and Portia was brought back to their section and told nothing else. She assumed that they were waiting for a decision from the octopus. The octopus that was a prisoner was no longer in its adjacent chamber, at least she couldn't see it. Then they were moved again, this time to a chamber that was a lot smaller that was air filled and had an old terminal. There was even a chair but it wasn't very well made. On the wall there was an illustration of something that was supposed to be human. In the next chamber, looking at them, was a dozen octopuses, and one of them seemed to be the prisoner octopus that they've seen earlier. Looking at the octopuses, it seems that all of them seem to be in agreement except for the former prisoner, and it seems as if they're trying to get it to talk to Helena and Portia, which it did reluctantly. She linked her slate into the terminal so she could translate what he was saying easier. And with Portia, emphasizing Helena's message, they responded back to him. Their octopus ambassador was telling them that they knew about the Voyager and where it was hiding in the outer solar system. Portia viewed that as a threat, but Helena thought it wasn't quite a threat yet. They just wanted them to know. When Helena responded, she was calm and curious and worried about her friends and friendly, all in the same statement. Then they told her about the Lightfoot and the station orbiting Nod, which seems to be an obsession to them. Then Portia realized that they had a signal from the Lightfoot which was on the planet, that Kern was signaling, hoping that the Voyager would intercept and mount a rescue mission. Then they realized that the octopus wanted Portia and Helena to go with them to Nod, and they weren't sure why, if it was a rescue mission or what and it seems that the octopus thought that they could help and what choice did they really have back on Nod it was Viola that got the drones working it was also Viola who used the machine to bring Zane back to the ship and steered it manually because she couldn't get the onboard processor to work they had stored Zane's suit in quarantine but not Zane because the Artifabian told them that she never shared the atmosphere Viola had given Fabian a drone so he could examine the city that he thinks he saw. Also, Kern was trying to contact the Voyager in such a way that she would not give away its position. She was also trying to contact Meshner. Fabian didn't think that there was a Meshner to contact, although Kern says there was. He thinks that she was just reaching his implant. When he told her that, she didn't answer. Kern was replenishing her ants, which is her hardware, and she was also converting the upper sections of the hull to photosynthetics so she could get more power. Once Fabian's drone was in the air, he realized that it was a city. It was a city built for humans, but it was in ruins. Then as he looked closer, he noticed that the city was not built. The city was sculpted from the stone. And a still closer look made him realize that it wasn't really a city, it was a facsimile of a city. The doors and windows led nowhere but solid stone. He takes the drone higher so he can see more of the area and he sees further out another city and beyond that a larger city with a river running through it, all of them fake. And as he was bringing the drone back he saw something in one of the cities that looked human. It wasn't human but it had a human shape. Parts of it was made of stone and shell and it was shuffling along. It was made to look like a human in a spacesuit. And as he pulled the drone away, the apparition broke apart. And Fabian wondered how he was going to tell Viola about what he just saw. Kern was regaining more of her processing power as her ant hardware replenished themselves. She was trying to figure out who Lanty was, who made the call that brought her here in the first place, who the entity in the station was, it obviously looked human but wasn't, and why she's so obsessed with finding out, and why she needs to get in contact with Meshner. 
She manages to get in contact with Meshner, at least with his implant. Now she considers that since she can access his implant, maybe this is a trap. The creature that has taken over him may be setting a trap for her. So she decides whether she should go in or not. She may not be able to get back out, but she goes in anyway. When she gets in, she realizes that the implant is reconfiguring itself and doing something because its higher functions are working feverishly and she's not sure what they're doing. The only way for her to figure that out is to go into those higher functions and see what's going on. But if she goes in and this is a trap and she can't get back out, she'll be dooming her crew to death. But she's a Van Kern and this is what she does. So she goes in. Helen and Portia are discussing what the octopuses really want. Portia suggests that maybe they want to use Helena as a host for whatever is in the station. But Helena, who was beginning to trust her gut feeling about what the octopuses really want, believes that this faction of them wants something different. Soon they were on a ship and ready to go. The ship was made of four globes, the largest in front, the smallest in the back, in a tapering chain. As they're ready to go, they place Helena and Portia in a small sphere that was lined with some sort of transparent gel that would cushion them against the acceleration. And as they get ready to go, Helena can see that outside of the ship, there was gathering a bunch of octopus and they seem angry. And it occurred to her that the group that has them may have stolen them and are about to do something that the majority of octopus are not happy with. And the ones in the ship seems to be worried and hurrying about what they were doing. And suddenly, the ship moved out of the watery globe they were in, and they were on their way. They were moving fast enough that soon they caught up with another ship that was already on the way. The other ship was larger, and their smaller ship tagged on to its end point, which was a good thing because their ship had just run out of fuel. Meanwhile, Portia worked out that the octopus ships was much more fuel efficient than their own. In the chamber ahead of theirs was their octopus ambassador, who didn't look very pleased to be there. Later, Helena was awakened by Portia, and they saw that the ambassador was white with fear. When asked through the slate what was going on, he told them about death and violence and blamed them for the problem they were in. Apparently, there were ships patrolling the area in space, and a couple of them had come to stop them and destroy them if they had to. One of them was the ship that shut down the Lightfoot. Meshner did not have a happy childhood. He grew up on the reservation. The reservation was the place where they placed those few humans who came down from the Gelgamesh who were unable to accept the spiders due to physiological and psychological reasons. Over time, the number of humans on the reservation dwindled as the people grew old and died, and Meshner's mother was one of them. He would visit his mother, and she would tell him conspiracy theories about how the spiders are trying to turn humans into cattle. Then he would go back to his school, and he would be laughed at and whispered behind his back because of his crazy mother. And it was then, at age 11, that he decided that he would try to figure out how to import spider understandings into humans because spider children didn't have to go to school. They learned whatever they wanted to via their understandings. So he assumed they never got ridiculed. And now he is running from something that's chasing him, trying to take a hold of him. And what he doesn't realize is he's running in his mind. He is going from memory to memory as the thing that's chasing him is taking over one memory at a time. Suddenly he's in another memory and nothing is familiar. He's in a place where the sea smells different, the air is different, the sky is the wrong shade, his body is the wrong weight. He sees around him all sorts of alien creatures, and then something begins to reconstruct itself out of the water before him. At first it is humanoid, but then it disintegrates, leaving just the face and a suit, and it opens its eyes, it opens its mouth, it's a woman's face, and she says, our name is Lanti. And just before he could answer, a hand reaches out and grabs him and pulls him elsewhere. The parasite had discovered something unexpected. They remember how it is and how to avoid the traps that is the human body. They've made themselves inoffensive and they let it carry them to the complex spaces. They found their new home there at last 
and abandon the costly enterprise of being an independent creature because that is hard and so wearing to be outside a vessel. But they have discovered worlds. They have discovered worlds just as they were promised long ago. They are going on an adventure. Paul is unhappy. At first he tried to figure out how he could escape, but then he realizes he can't escape because he can't survive in a vacuum. So then he turned his attention to trying to master the aliens. And just as he begins to do that, along comes this warship filled with weapons. And the science ship that he's on doesn't have any weapons, at least none that he could see. And as he watched, both sides begin to try to appeal to the other, to try and convince the other. Now, violence is not their first resort. It's just something they come to quickly. Then Paul gets an idea, but it means that he needs to be able to talk to the aliens now. Helena was paying attention to the warship when Portia came over and told her that the ambassador Octopus was signaling her. It seems that the ambassador was trying to speak to them and was trying something new. What he sent was tagged with indicators that Helena could reassemble. What he told her was about an experiment that was perhaps unwise and condemned but was pressed on by others and now everything seems about to fail. So with Portia's help, she responded, identifying their ship, the warship, the planets, and the beyond, indicating their own origin. She also told him, we come in peace, we need to speak with our friends, we need to help them. All the while, the two ships were debating with each other. Zane needed medical attention, and Fabian was trying his best with his limited knowledge to help her. Meanwhile, Viola was trying to get Kern attention, but Kern was using all of her resources doing something that nobody knew what. Viola was trying to isolate portions of Kern's system so that life support, hull integrity, and repair efforts could continue. The android, Artie Fabian, was helping to tend to Zane. Then they received a message from Portia who tells them she doesn't know how long they have and they should report their circumstances to her immediately. So Portia, first with Fabian, then with Viola, discuss everything that's been going on, and Viola gets Portia to promise that she will try to talk to the science faction that's holding them and negotiate with them because she has information that they could use against the enemy that they are afraid of and she would pass it on to them for a rescue. So Fabian began putting together all of the information and data that they had gathered and found about Nod. So all of them, including Zane, who was now well enough to help, began reading and studying the information about Nod and came to certain conclusions. Artie Fabian, who was working with Fabian, told them that the parasite has not only evolved a sophisticated method of encoding memory and experience, which is copied to all future generations, but that it is able to use this facility to upload a human consciousness. Then Viola adds that Zane has come to believe that the parasite can reconstruct the dead human from memory and that as long as that entity remains, it doesn't realize that it is not. It's just a simulation. It believes that it is real. That's when Fabian adds that every cell of the parasite that came into contact with Lanti holds all of the information that was Lanti. Fabian goes on to say that that thing, the parasite, have been Lanti, and he remembers being Lanti for thousands of years, but he doesn't think it stored enough of her. That's when Zane replied, and now it will store Meshner. Now, Meshner is in a different section that he doesn't recognize. He can sense his pursuer still trying to get to him, and he's with a woman. This one is not Lante, but it is someone he knows. He just doesn't recognize her at first. Then it comes to him, Kern. Meshner, of course, asks his Kern what is going on, and she tells him that the implant that he has in him was designed to hold a personality of the body, and that's where he is now. When he asks for help in getting back to his body, she tells him that his body has been taken over by an alien life form. She goes on to tell him that the alien is an endoparasite and it is now encapsulated in his brain. And when he goes to answer her, she recognizes that the parasite has found them. So she grabs him and drags him off to somewhere else. She takes him to a party where the participants have no features, but they are found again and off to go running one more time. 
But soon, Meshner figures out what's going on. Kern is creating virtual spaces in his mind surrounding them, and it makes it seem as if they're running, but they're not really running. And now that he knows that, the parasite now knows that, since it knows everything he does. So it found them. And then it asks, where is the space, the geometry, the complexity? There were worlds we were promised. We don't understand. Helen and Porcher received information from Viola and Fabian, and they passed that on to the octopus. She can see that the warship faction is afraid and angry that the science faction have come to a place that is forbidden. The science faction that holds them have set things up so that both she and Portia could see both sides of the debate going on. She asks the ambassador what is the science faction's plan when they get to the planet, but he doesn't know. The ambassador then gives her some information about the long-range scans of NAD, the orbiting station, and the recordings of multiple infection rates from the fall of Damascus. And just as Portia and Helena were discussing, maybe the octopus's technology would succeed in finding a cure where theirs didn't, that's when they heard from Kern who said they will not succeed. She goes on to tell them that they can't cure this disease because it is not a disease, it is a self-evolving organism in complete control of itself. It went from paratizing an alien animal to surviving in the human body to interacting with the human brain. When Helena says, then does that mean that you have to destroy it? Where does that leave us? Kern then says, that's not what I'm saying. We are exploring possibilities, Meshner and I. You need to buy us time. Kern goes on to say, she will save everyone. She will save Meshner, but she needs time. Helena knew she couldn't give them the information she got from Viola because that would aggravate things. So Portia tells her to tell them a story, so that's what she does. She tells them a story about the world of humans who came to their planet as a party of terraformers, about a man who loved octopus, about alien life on a planet, about a woman named Lanty. Meanwhile, she's been fed information from Viola and Portia to help her with the story. She tells it to Paul, the ambassador, who then tells it to the other octopus. And as Paul is doing this, he's beginning to feel awe because he feels that he's the linchpin of something great that is happening, something new. And meanwhile, the parasite that is in Meshner's brain is encoding human thoughts so seamlessly that soon there is no hard line between where human ends and alien begins. Back in the implant in Meshner's brain, Kern and Meshner are having a discussion because Meshner feels he is real. He thinks he's real and he feels real. But Kern is trying to convince him otherwise by telling him what the parasite is doing. Lanty, who is also there listening, is also convinced that she's real. It's not until she speaks that Meshner begins to realize that something is wrong. That's when he asks Kern, what is Lanta? Where is she now? Kern tells him that she's a memory, she's a simulation. And that's when she says such complexity, and Meshner knew that that was coming from somewhere besides Lanty. It was from the puppeteer. She goes on to tell him that she is encoded in the individual cells of the parasite. That's when he realizes that the same thing is happening to him right now. He then turns to Lanty and asks, what do you want? And she replies, we are going on an adventure. We have found such new rules and ideas, worlds and stars. Kern then tells him about the octopus's worship that is coming. When Kern admits that she's fighting to keep the implant free of the parasite, and Meshner realizes she can only slow it down. She can't stop it. They can't hold it off forever. Then he comes up with an idea. He wants Kern to upload all of the information from Lanty that Fabian has hacked, loaded up into the implant so the parasite could see it. The crew of the warship that was in orbit around Nod's moon was watching something new. For the first time, the argument that usually happens between the octopus was happening between three factions and one of those was the aliens, and the most influential member of that ship at the moment was Ahab. He was a scientist that was trying to use science to solve the problem that Nard represents, but he could never come up with anything, and that made him angry, and that made his crew stay out of his way. Several times he came close to destroying the old station, but at the last minute backed away. And when the aliens came to the station that was in orbit around Nard, it was his attack that wiped out that immediate threat. 
He stayed in orbit around the moon to be close to Nod because he knew that the aliens had survived the crash. And now he listens as Noah's people, the science faction, were very enthusiastic about a new way to solve Nod's problem. And some of them were even very protective towards the aliens, although it was the aliens that caused all these problems. And he listened as the human was telling a very emotive tale about triumph, sadness, joy, and fear. And now the moon had moved out of the way, so he has a clear shot at the planet's surface or the station. Meanwhile, Portia is telling Fabian and Viola all about Helena's attempts. She warns them that Helena may not succeed, so they should leave the crash site just in case. But they tell her they won't survive out on the planet for very long. So then Zane and the Arty Fabian got Fabian's attention. There was something going on outside. He sent the drone to take a look, and it was the creature he had seen before when the drone was over the city. It climbed up the edge of the cliff and was headed towards the crash site. He managed to get a hold of Kern and he asked her what does it want and she said adventure and then wouldn't answer anymore. He and Viola discussed what they could do to stop it and it turns out they couldn't do very much. So he watched as the creature came closer. I will stop here and continue this in a future video. I'd like to thank you for watching and listening. Subscribe if you haven't. Give us a like, drop us a comment and I will see you in the next video.